All right, here's another video. This is, I believe, for July 2018. And I'm just going to show, I didn't buy very much in July, honestly. I think there's only about maybe 15 records here. Maybe even, maybe less. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, only 11 records. So this is probably, this might be the slowest month out of my entire record collecting in, you know, over five years or so. I've, since there's so few records, I'm just going to do all the genres in one, which is basically metal, some indie and punk records or whatever, and then a pop record, actually. So the first record I'm going to show, I'm going to show kind of newest to oldest. This is Battle Beast. This came out in 2015, and this is Unholy Savior. This is actually a really good record. It's a power metal record. There's keyboard synthesizers as well, and this is a really good record by Battle Beast. There's a lot of really good songs on here. There's a cover song of T Push It to the Limit, which is from the soundtrack of Scarface, which they do a really good job with that. And really good album. Next album is from one of my favorite bands. This is the first album that I bought from this band. At the time that I bought this, their, you know, their discography on vinyl wasn't fully out. You know, like everything wasn't out on vinyl at the time, or if it was, you know, some of the early represses of this stuff was really, really expensive. It was really hard to get. And that's Aventine. This is Angel of Babylon. This is Tobias Samet's band that he kind of does a rock opera with. And this is the second album in the Scarecrow series, I believe. And yeah, this is a great, great album. Angel of Babylon is great. This has a bunch of great singers on it. One of my favorite on here is John Oliva, who sings Death is Just a Feeling. That is fantastic. John sounds fantastic. Sounds really a lot like his old Sabotage days. I really wish he was writing songs like this. I mean, the song that he is on on this sounds a lot like a Sabotage song. So maybe Tobias kind of wrote a Sabotage type song for him to sing on, which I thought was fantastic. But there's a lot of really, really great songs on this album. Angel of Babylon is great. <laughs>
bought this at the same place that I bought Angel of Babylon at. There was a, a guy who was selling stuff out of his garage, which is Epica. This is Epica's first album, The Phantom Agony, and this is the expanded edition that came out of vinyl. It's on red. This is an excellent album. Epica is great, really great. Symphonic, power metal, just good stuff. I mean, the, the vocals on here are fantastic. The symphonic, you know, operatic type vocals. This has some of the death metal growls. I don't think they do that as much anymore. And yeah, this just has some really great songs. Phantom Agony is probably my favorite song on here, the title track. And they got their name of their band from the Camelot record called Epica, which I actually have that album as well. Uh, cool album. I think it was repressed just recently too, so it should be fairly easy to get. The one thing I don't like about this is this album cover. I think this album cover is pretty terrible. This this photograph isn't that good. It's really doctored. It it looks it just looks photoshopped. The the background is really cool on it. It's just I don't I don't think I like the photo that much. But regardless of that, it's it's a really good record. This one is kind of hard to get. I got this actually, I think I got this on Amazon and it was kind of on sale or on a clearance or something like that. And that's Death Symbolic. This one's actually kind of hard to get. This is one of the, I think it might be the only album that was released on Metal Blade by Death. And yeah, this is a good record, more progressive stuff from Death. It doesn't have the guttural death metal, you know, or death, you know, up to up to human type vocals. So this has more of the higher screaming vocals from Chuck, which are, are you know, it's a period of time. I, I kind of prefer the guttural Chuck stuff, but it, it, it sounds good over this type of music. one I got I think on um, 
Amazon as well for like 10 or 15, 20, 20 bucks, maybe 15 or 20 bucks. This is Carcass Hardwork. This is one of the first melodic death metal records. You know, a lot of bands, you know, listened to this album and wanted to make, you know, music like this. So there was, uh, you know, Carcass had changed their sound completely on this album too. Like every album prior to this, like they kind of did different, you know, musical styles kind of, you know, they started with grindcore, then went to kind of death metal. And then, you know, now they're doing this kind of melodic death metal thing. But yeah, I think that this album is incredibly influential of the Swedish melodic death metal scene. And this is a fantastic album. No Love Lost was a was a great song on here as well. Just just fantastic album. Really, really, really good stuff. But, you know, if you like the earlier Carcass stuff and, you know, maybe you don't like this newer the newer sound and carcass kind of the new even the newer albums like the latest album surgical steel they kind of stick with this sound so uh, it's different but it's good This album came out in 1984. This is Warlord. This is kind of a cool album. This is, and the Canons of Destruction have begun. This is an original pressing and it says a video soundtrack, which is kind of neat because what they did was, and this is a live shot from the video, they actually rented out an empty club and they videotaped them playing all the songs from this album and they played them live. So this is basically a live album, but it's kind of like, you know, a uh, sound check, I guess you would say, because there's no crowd or anything like that. And it was kind of recorded for a videotape. It was kind of unique for the time where maybe video was kind of new and they just wanted to see if, you know, they could sell videos and the record. I don't know. But this is a really good album. Warlord is kind of, you know, one of those underground bands that came out in the 80s. It was a, this is a Metal Blade. I got the $6.99 price slash for Metal Blade. And yeah, like this is like an LA band. These guys get put into the American power metal, like with Sabotage and stuff like that. And I think they kind of do fit pretty good into that category. But yeah, really good songs on here. Um, Lucifer's Hammer is on here, which is good. Aliens is, is a song that's good. And Deliver Us is also good on here. All right, so we're gonna get into some of the Indian pop or, or a lot of this is kind of, it's interesting. There's like <laughs> several different types of music here. All right, so I picked up Matthew Sweet, 100% Fun. This is 
one of the best power pop albums ever made. This came out in 1995. So this is definitely post when power pop was kind of over, you know, there's there always was like a power pop album that would pop up like maybe one a year that kind of got some recognition, you know, or maybe some years were skipped. But in the 90s, Matthew Sweet kind of really brought it back with the Girlfriend album. This is the Intervention Records reissue, supposedly from the original Master Tapes. It sounds fantastic, and it has a bunch of the extra songs on the second album. The second album is on 45 RPM, so a lot of the B-sides that were released as singles are, are on here. And he did the same thing with Altered Beast. There's a, some of those B-side songs are really, really, really good. I, I, I had all those on CD singles back in the day, you know, back in the 90s when, I, when this album came out and stuff. I actually have, I think I still have the, I have the Japanese CD pressing of this album, which came with a comic book where he's, he's like in a mech or something like that. And, you know, you fight some dude. I don't know. It's crazy. It's pretty cool. I actually had him sign that at an in-store when he toured for this album. I actually got to see that, which was really cool. Fantastic album here. 100% fun is, gets 100%. In some queer core here, which is Les Bionic punk metal. This is Team Drash. This is Personal Bass. This is a original press. This was kind of like one of my first grails, kind of. I mean, 100% Fun is, is as well, and so is Girlfriend, but those were reissues. This was kind of an original press that I really, really, really wanted. I really love Team Drash, and I was looking for the second album of theirs, Captain My Captain, at the same time. And I ended up, I do have both of the original presses of these records as well as the reissues that just came out, I think last year or a couple years ago. This is kind of a punk band, very, very heavy guitar on this album and just fantastic stuff. This is from the Riot Girl era from 1995. So Riot Girl was in full swing or was just beginning to, 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 to get a lot of traction, you know, Bikini Kill, you know, that whole deal. I listened to a ton of bands from that era and Team Dress was one of the best and Personal Best is one of the best albums of this type of Riot Girl stuff.
another Riker album. This was Carrie Carrie's from Slater Kenny, her first album with a different group before she was in Slater Kenny. And this is Excuse 17. This is Such Friends Are Dangerous. This album is amazing. It's melodic, it's heavy, it's punk, it's fantastic. And you can kind of tell, you know, where, you know, Carrie takes, Carrie Brownstein takes her influences and brings it into, or, you know, her songwriting style and brings it into Slater Kenny. This is just like a really raw, early, you know, Slater Kenny sound, you know, even in though the other two members, Corn Tucker, you know, weren't, weren't in this band in particular. This also was another grail. The only reason, and I got this for like 20 or 30 bucks. And the only reason I got it so cheap at the time is this corner is really bent to shit. But that's just, you know, you don't play the cover, right? So I didn't care about that. I had the guy send me a picture and I'm like, dude, that's nothing. You know, it's not like ripped or anything like that. It has the original sleeve and the, the vinyl is perfect. I just listened to it not too long ago. Such a, such a great record. Will You Wear White on Your Wedding Day is excellent song. Five Acres is great. Watchmaker, I'd Rather Eat Glass. Nervousness Never Fades. She Wants to Be Every song on this is fantastic. I love, love, love this album. If you're looking for some Riot Girl stuff to listen to from the 90s, this is an album to check out. This is some, I guess, self-professed. Well, Cub came up with the, the title, I believe, of Cuddlecore. So Bunny Grunt, this is Action Pants. This is kind of a Cuddlecore record. It's just kind of like an indie pop record. I actually put this under my Power Pop section because it is very, very infectious. The the I put this with Ghost Sailor, you know, kind of deal. Bunny Grunt was just fantastic. But this cover was done by Guy Burwell. And he did a ton of covers, or not necessarily covers, but posters for live shows and stuff like that, I think in LA. And yeah, you can look him up online and there's a lot of interesting artwork that he did for a lot of live shows. 
This is the Bunny Grin album. This is really good song on here, Criminal Boy. I used to have the seven inch on that. And this I just randomly, this is wild because you know, I never, I think I saw this record one other time, but the first time I saw this was at Lunchbox. It was just in the bins. It was like 10 or 15 bucks. I was like, I cannot believe that I'm getting a punk record from the nineties, kind of or a, a, a power pop or, you know, whatever you want to call it, cuddlecore album from the nineties. Cause yeah, this came out in 95 as well you know, for that price. In the 90s, and 95 in particular, you know, in, in these middle 90s years, these are the kind of bands, these indie pop or indie rock or punk rock bands that were putting out vinyl in the 90s. Like there wasn't, they kind of kept a lot of the pressing plants, you know, business. You know, there's a lot of albums from these indie labels that put out a lot of vinyl, including lots of seven inches and even full lengths like this, you know, 12 inch records, the full length albums. This is really good. The song on here, Criminal Boy, is fantastic. And the last album I'm going to show is an 80s pop classic. This came out in 1986, and this is Samantha Fox, Touch Me. Great record. I do like Samantha Fox. I have all three of her full-length albums from the 80s. Um, really good stuff. I just like this stuff. It's, you know, people say that there's, you know, you have a guilty pleasure, and a lot, a lot of people would put Samantha Fox as a guilty pleasure. I guess that kind of works. It does because, you know... I guess a guilty pleasure is, you know, you kind of, oh, I don't want everybody to know I really like this, but I love it kind of thing. But I, I don't care if anybody knows that I love Samantha Fox because I do like those first three albums from the 90s. I had Naughty Girls Need Love 2 in the late 80s, 88 or whatever, when it came out. I had that, a seven-inch single, <laughs> you know, so I really liked that album. And I have the full length on there, and, and this is Touch Me. So this is really good. The song Touch Me is really good. There's some other okay songs or good songs on here. And then there's just some other songs that are just okay. But Samantha Fox.
All right, that's my attempt at July. That's all there really is for 2018. All right, thanks, bye.